Hello, welcome to the seam allowance and overlocking activity. Seam allowance is really important for sewing. The seam allowance is defined as the gap between where the stitch line is and the edge of the fabric. So you can see that at the stitch line on this picture here. And when we do this, we usually sew with the right sides of our fabric facing each other. Seam allowance is the most important part of sewing. It is the distance from the cut edge of the fabric to where you actually sew your stitches. The correct seam allowance is different from project to project, but it's usually in textiles 1cm or 1.5cm depending on the project. If you sew at the incorrect seam allowance, you could end up with a project that's either too big or too small for the intended purpose. For a pin cushion, this is not a big deal. But if you're sewing clothing and your project ends up too big or too small, it's not going to fit you properly. On your needle plate, there are lines and numbers. And for today's task, you are going to be using the line that says 15. That 15 represents 15 millimetres, otherwise known as 1.5 centimetres. first thing you're going to do is cut out your pattern pieces, grab your piece of calico, fold it in half lengthways, and then pin your three pieces of pattern onto your calico as shown. You should put your pins in every corner and long edge of your pattern to hold it in place while you're cutting. Go to a flat surface, grab some fabric scissors, and cut around the edge of each piece of pattern. When you do this, be careful not to cut the, the paper itself because that can make the scissors blunt. Now generally speaking, I always cut away from my body. Sometimes in this video, I cut in a different angle just because of the camera being in the way. But generally speaking, you should cut away from your body. So move your fabric around or move your body around so you are cutting away. You have more control and you will be more accurate during the process. Once you've cut out your pieces, you then need to remove your pins and take the paper off. Once you've removed the paper, you then need to pin your two pieces of fabric back together for sewing. And again, you wanna do that in the corners of the rectangle for the curve, you want to do this perpendicular to the edge along the curve of the fabric. And for the other curve, the same thing. So now we're up to sewing. When you are sewing your samples today, you need to line up the edge of your fabric on the 15 line of the sewing machine. Now when I am sewing, that is always where I look at. I'm always looking at the line that says 15 or whichever line I'm following. But for, for today, it's the 15 line. If I want to stop to take a pin out or stop to look somewhere else, um, I actually stop sewing. I don't just glance away from that line because watching that line with your fabric on the edge of that line is how you are going to sew a, an accurate seam allowance. So that's the first one done. Moving on to the next one, number two. Again, I am looking at the 15 line as I sew here, but I can't look at it along the edge of the fabric because it is a curve. I'm actually looking at that line just next to the needle. For the other curve, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking at that 15 line just next to the needle because the curve is not going to stay on that 15 line all the way around. It's just next to the needle that you need to look at. And then you'll be able to sew an accurate seam allowance. All right, next up to the overlocker. Now, before you use an overlocker, you need to do overlocking training. So come and see me first. But when you do use the overlocker, we need to make sure that we're trimming off a tiny bit of fabric and that your seam line, your stitch line, is in line with that corner of the presser foot on the overlocker. Remember not to lift the presser foot up, there's no need to. The feed dogs are very large on the overlocker and it will just take your fabric right through your, uh, the overlocker. 
So you can see that the overlocking is in line with the stitch line. Gets a little bit more tricky on the curve, but again, you are focusing on the stitch line and where it meets the presser foot on that corner. If you're still unsure, there's a picture on front of the overlocker that shows you how to line that up. Now lastly, the concave curve. This is the trickiest one. This is where most people um, have problems. Go a bit slower. Don't be afraid to stop and readjust as you go through this. But again, you're focusing on keeping your stitch line on the corner of the presser foot. All right, so that is that last one done. The next step is to remove all your uh, chains from the overlocker and then you can come and show me your work.